So the next tool that I'd like to show you is called Miro. It used to be called Real Time Board. Basically, it's a collaborative whiteboard and it's aimed at offices for business purposes, but you can use it very easily for students. And there's lots of different types of templates that can be used for brainstorming and concept mapping or generating ideas. I use the free version. So basically you can only use three boards at once. And if you use more than that, it will just make other ones inactive. So when you create a new board, you're basically looking at a blank canvas. The benefit of this is that it's infinite. You can scroll on and on and on, zoom in and out, and you can just keep adding anything that you need. So for example, if we just add some shapes here, you will see you can zoom out and you can copy and paste them and put them in different places and they will all line up. So we'll get into more information about how to use this specifically for the classroom. But for now, just some basic features. You've got some text. You can edit the text in any way that you want. You've got post-its, which are useful for adding little tips or advice or homework. Um, shapes, which are quite simple and easy to use. Arrows for drawing attention to something. Um, the pencil for drawing a picture. And of course, your comments. So, that's the basics. And what is one of the most useful features I find is the frame. And with the frame, you can basically establish topics or establish classes. So if you have one group for one whiteboard, for example, you want to kind of keep the number of whiteboards down, you can just add a frame and call this, uh, for example, uh, lesson three, um, for example, April, third, uh, 2020, right? And you can just keep copying and adding so that they can reference all of their notes from that lesson as they keep going forward. Then if you have any images, you can upload them directly. And you can also upload uh, from online got to be careful though because the sizing is not always very accurate if you want to put some pictures somewhere. You can also upload from Google Images for example or if you have a Chrome extension you can upload from there. Basically drag and drop and it works like magic. The Google Image Search. So for example if you want to show platypus you can just drop it. Sometimes it's a bit slow or it doesn't work because it's not fully accurate, but then you might just have to go back and find another one. So it's very quick. If students ask teacher, what does platypus mean? You can very easily drop a picture from Google images there. And that's just clicking on these three dots, Google image search. A few other features are tables and charts. If you're studying something academic or like IELTS task one, you want to demonstrate something. Mind map for brainstorming and a few other features like this. Also, you can present it. So if you're sharing your screen, then you can get rid of everything else. Here, you can see all of the frames. So if you have six lessons, for example, each one will show up as individual frames. Then if you want to have comments like a dialogue with your students, if you're kind of like uh, asking and answering questions and getting them to add comments on it. That's where you can see all of these comments as they come, or you can do it through the chat. Chat's not really useful if you're using Zoom, or if you want to keep the chat on the lesson itself, you can do it right there. The next feature is the cards. Cards are quite useful for organizing topics. Um, so for example, if you want to put, let's say, um, present perfect rules, Another useful feature of these cards is you can assign homework tasks because you can actually set a date for it to become due. You can also send a link in the email to your students or attach it to Google Classroom as an assignment so that the 
homework is linked to the whiteboard that you were doing the class work on. For example. So I'd like to show you what a large project looks like on the whiteboard. This is a series of training sessions that I did with a group and you can see at the beginning it was just something simple showing the answers for receptive skills and eliciting some features of effective speaking classes to encourage fluency. And then here I used frames to divide each session that we had. So for each lesson there is one frame and these were all of the games that we were playing together. And then this is where the next frame was for the next lesson. This was actually being projected onto an interactive whiteboard and then I was writing on my tablet. So if you have a tablet with a pen, it's quite easy to write on from anywhere that you are. So this is even useful if you have physical lessons, not even for just online lessons, but if you have a physical lesson and <clears throat> an interactive whiteboard, or even if you just have a TV screen or a projector at the front of the class, you can log into this whiteboard, just share it with yourself. So it's view only, open it up on the whiteboard, and then edit it from your tablet and then you can actually walk around the classroom and edit and write and elicit ideas and still continue to interact with the students. So this is, you can actually zoom in and out and you can see the entire project of all of the lessons that we did together here. And then I just shared the link with the participants so that they had it for their own reference. Another way to do it is to elicit ideas. This hasn't saved actually, but I did an inquiry-based learning activity about inquiry-based learning with this group. And I elicited um, a KWL chart, what they know, what they want to know, and what they learned from this activity right here. So you can use a combination of visuals and the classroom uh, or just do it online and have all of your learners observe it and you fill it out as you go in order to keep everyone focusing on the same point.